Hello everyone, welcome back once again. In this video, we will look at ASP.NET Core Web API, both client and server applications using the Visual Studio 2019. But before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. So let's get to it then. So what is really a Web API? So Web API is just an application programming interface for either a web server or their web browser. So what is also a web ASP.NET Core Web API? So that is a framework for building HTTP services that can assist by that can be accessed by any client, including browsers, mobile devices. Etc. It is also an ideal platform for building RESTful applications on the .NET Core. So enough of all of this, so let's get to it then. So as you can see here, and I've got Visual Studio 2019 open, so we go straight into it then. I actually have a blank solution, so I'm just going to go by adding a new project. So if you don't have this, then obviously you just, go, you just start by actually adding a new project then you can get to the solution side. So I'm just going to add a web API, ASP.NET Core Web API, right? So we're just going to click next. So here we're just going to name it um, Web API Server, right? So I'm just going to click next and here we can select whatever version of .NET framework to target. So we're not going to look too much into that. So obviously, we're not going to actually configure the application for HTTPS as it's not necessary for this video. And also, we're just going to remove the enable open API support as well. So we're just going to uncheck this bit as well. So the next is obviously we click on the create. So now we've actually got a sample template created for us. So what we do is we're just going to remove this bit here. Um, the weather forecast. And then we come inside the controller. Then we remove the controller bit as well. So please follow this part very carefully. So once we, we actually remove that, yeah, what we do next is we, we come inside the dependencies, right? So by, before that, yeah, we right click our controller and then we add new item so we're just going to select asp.net call so what we do is we're going to add an empty api controller so here as you can see we've got an empty api controller which is values controller right so once we've added the controller we've got values controller so we actually expand the properties then the launch settings. <clears throat> so here, as you can see, we've got um, the launch URL to be weather forecast. So we're gonna change this bit and we've got the values controller. So we're just gonna put values here instead, right? So that's all we're gonna do for this bit. We're just gonna save the file and we can actually close it, right? So the next bit, obviously, we're just gonna add a new one more project. And this project will be obviously a console app. So it's a C sharp console app, right? And this project will be obviously, um, let's say, web API client, right? So we add this as well. We click on the create and we should get an, a console app created for us, yeah? So as we can see here now, the project is all set to run only the web API server. So whilst we're here, we're just going to right click on the solution and then we come to the set startup project. So as you can see here, we click on the multiple startup project here. And then we, we actually put both of them on the start so that we can get both of them start at the same time. So here, put start as well we apply the changes 
So as you can see, the changes has been actually reflected here. So we've got multiple start projects here. Yeah. So now what we do is we come inside the values controller. We're just going to put nothing fanciful here. So we're just going to make a very simple get method. So it's HTTP get. Yeah. So we're just going to call this um, public um string we're just gonna make some string array and what we call it is get so here what we do is we only are going to return a new instance of a string array so we're just gonna put some data in some data string data inside here so the first data obviously i'm just gonna put mango the next I mean this is entirely up to you so you can put whatever you want but for this video I'm just gonna make it as simple as possible so we're just gonna put banana and we're gonna put pear and one more we're just gonna put one more uh, but, um, apple yeah Just a moment, please. Okay, so I mean, I've actually got the comma inside, so I'm just gonna pull it out here. Then, the, then one should go away. So this is all we've actually got there, the get method. So what we do is we come inside the, um, um, the client, the web API client, we open the program. So here, so right after the console dot right line here, what we do is just gonna pull another, another console dot right line here. So what we do is we're going to start by using so we're just going to put first console the right line so here we're just going to say press any key to continue so what we do is we're just gonna put another console dot red line here. And then what we do is we, we use the using keyword. So we're using uh, we're going to use HTTP client, which will be cl our clients. This will be equal to the new instance of our HTTP client, right? So here, what we do is we actually reference it. So we're going to use the, the system.net.http.http client. Yeah, so we're going to use the same for this as well. System.http. Yeah, so that's what we're going to be using now. So what we do is we just put it inside a bracket. So what we do is we initialize a variable called response. This will be equal to. So this method, what we do is we're going to make the, the main method async task. So here we're going to reference system.threading.task. So inside the, the respond, we're going to, we can await, yeah? So we could say client dot get async. So we can put our URI inside here. So what we do is I'm just gonna make the server to start up, just to start up, yeah? We're going to set it to start up so it'll be just the server that will run so we can get the uri yeah so actually before you can run we can run it there's one more thing that i need to show you so we come inside the view values controller so basically here if you've got the slash api just remove that bit from 
controller. And then run it again. So as you can see here now, we've got the values the screen array display. So what we do is we copy this URI. Yes. So we stop it from running. Then we come inside uh, the program.cs code. So inside here, we can paste the URI that we just copied inside here. <coughs> yeah, so what we can do is we can say response.ensure success code. And then we can say if response does is success to success status code that means we know that the, the is is successful the response is successful so this is what we would do we go into initialize a string variable we know it's a string array but we just we could convert it to a string array but we're just gonna leave that for next video so we could say await response dot content dot reader string async yeah so the next bit is obviously we could say console dot write line then we can put the message inside the console yeah so after that what we could just do is else we put the else statement here so we could say console dot write line a response or we could just leave it here something like this you can just write something like this so response error code will be so we can put the response code here so we could say response dot status code yeah so that's what we're going to leave for here for now so as you can see, it's very simple stuff. So what we do is we actually turn it straight back to running the, the multiple projects. So initialize start a project. So we've got them started already. So apply changes and then we run it to see what actually happens. So now we're just going to wait for that. So that one is actually loaded. So we're just going to put this bit here and we actually get our console client. So we could press any key to enter so as you can see we've got the data now that's being displayed here now so we could actually convert it to array so it's just displaying a string so but you you get you get what is going on here now so what i'm going to do is leave the video here for now so you can actually explore it further and build on what you've actually learned from here so once again if you haven't subscribed to the channel please make sure you do because i've got lots of videos coming up and I Stay blessed.